In this video I want to explore the Californian hotspot. Now there's a lot of content to cover so I'm going to try and be as fast as I can. I'm sorry if this is a long video. So to start with, what is a hotspot? Well three things make up a hotspot. It has to be susceptible to tectonic activity, hydrometeorological hazards and have a vulnerable population. So in California there is tectonic activity because we have the San Andreas Fault and other minor fault lines which come um, around it. We have hydrometeorological hazards as we'll see such as droughts, flooding, um, you know, etc, etc. And there is a vulnerable population. This might sound weird because they're a high income country but vulnerable population basically means they're susceptible to human and economic loss due to where they live. So they are because they're susceptible to all these hazards. So where is California? It's 42 degrees longitude and 120 degrees latitude. Now the climate there is dry but when it rains, it only rains rarely but when it does it's very intense and it's a lot of rain. Um, the population is about 40 million so it is a mega city as you probably know from other parts of the syllabus. Um, they have some mountainous regions just like the Philippines. The Rocky Mountain Range goes up to 3,000 meters. They ha there's a crowded coast which is always dangerous as you probably know from Unit 2. And that is right parallel to the San Andreas Fault. So, you know, it's extra. And this is a high income country which is reliant on technology for their um, hazard uh, management. So let's start looking at the hazards quickly. Earthquakes. This is a geophysical hazard. And this mainly happens along the San Andreas Fault. It's a conservative plate boundary. Now, the earthquake I want to talk to you a bit about is called the Loma Prieta. Now, this happened in 1989, and different sources will say it ranges from 6.9 on the Richter scale to 7.1. So it's quite a big one. Now, why is it also called the World Series earthquake? Is because when it happened, it was at 5:04 p.m. when the World Series had begun, and many commuters or people who were working had left for work early so that they could get home and watch the program. This meant that there was less traffic on the roads, and also meant that less people were affected by the earthquake. Well, everyone was, but they could be at home and prepare themselves rather than being in a car. And it also happened in the least populated area, which is 60 miles away from the center. This resulted in 75 deaths. Now, as I said before, they are reliant on technology, but the problem was the technology was not telling precise dates. It can say in the next year that's going to be in the next six months when, but they can't say exact date when the earthquake will occur. Now, it ranges again, this earthquake, from 10 to 15 seconds, the earthquake, so it wasn't even that long, so that minimized the damage. The Transamerica building, triangular shape, strong lintels, has all the earthquake proof building features actually survived, which is great for such a huge one. There were secondary effects like fractured ga gas pipes led to fires, just like in the Kobe earthquake. There were landslides on coastal cliffs causing further damage. Houses on stilts, many people in LA live on houses which are made of silt, they failed, they broke. The Oakland Bay collapsed. And liquefaction is the main impact we need to know. This is when sand turns into slurry and it encourages flooding. So flooding, landslide, they all result. So how does LA manage this? Well, they increase education. They give information through leaflets, emergency packing system, television. They, you know, they tell you how to manage with it. They have drills in public places. And one thing they have, which the Philippines or another uh, uh, poorer country may not have, is warning systems. They have seismologists always looking at the seismic activity that's going on. Another hazard, which many people forget, is there is a hydrometeorological hazard of fog and smog. Because this reduces visibility and smog can cause many health-related problems. Now what happens is the cold air from the water, so around Long Beach and all that, mixes with the hot air from the land. That causes fog. But in LA, because of car transport being so big, the pollution mixes with these two to cause smog. Now this actually forces many people to move to rural areas or suburbanization. Or all these kind of things occur. And this can encourage the effect of wildfires because when wildfires ha happen and this house wooden stilts houses are built on, they burn as well, causing damage to the house. Now wildfires happen because they have extremely dry and hot seasons and they have caparel uh, vegetation which and scrubby vegetation and these burn 
easily and caporal vegetation particularly burns periodically that's what it's there for then another hydrometeorological um, event that happen, a hazard that happens there is drought. Now this is quite often because LA suffers with El Nino, but this means that in La Nina, yes, that they experience drought. And why this is a problem is because they have a growing population, growing needs, and water is already a scarce um, resource. There's not enough of it. And so then when drought happens, they further pressure because LA is actually like a desert, isn't it? Uh, by the way, I'm talking about the whole of California, not just LA. Okay, another factor which is more of a geomorphic hazard is landslides. Now, these tend to happen in Malibu and Santa Monica where we see coastal cliffs or steep cliffs. Now, they happen for many reasons. Well, they can happen because in winter, um, LA, um, California experiences heavy winter storms. There's also deforestation, which is always going on, and then caporal vegetation, which burns periodically. El Nino, yes, increased um, flooding and all that, and that causes more chance of landslides to happen. The soil also gets saturated and liquefaction when tectonic activity happens. So this, this is why, like, the Loma Prieta earthquake resulted in a landslide. Now, storms and river flooding. Well, what we need to know is the San Gabriel um, valley. Now, this has severe flooding in winter again, heavy winter storms. And again, the deforestation with scrubby and caporal vegetation, they just all encourage flooding. Now, on El Nino, also one thing that causes flooding happens in LA, as mentioned before. So you can see some of these causes overlap, but this is why we have storms and river floodings in California. People are also building on the flood plain because there's more and more people living in LA, the population is growing, so they're resulting to building there, so that's one of the reasons why more people are impacted. Also, California is low-lying low land, like Bangladesh, so it does suffer. The only thing is they can afford like hard engineering strategies, such as channelizing river, which they did, and the Morris Dam, where Bangladesh relies on short-term problems and it relies on foreign aid. So, um, yeah, I already talked about the management. So, coastal flooding. Coastal flooding, just like storm and river flooding, happens along the beach. This is significant because the long um, beach in California is actually diminishing. So, something worrying. Again, winter storms, but also climate change. This is causing sea levels to rise and more erosion. Then also the dam, which was built to prevent flooding, is actually incre increasingly um, pushing, like it working as a catalyst to diminish Long Beach because all the sediment is getting trapped in the dam. So this means that the coastline is reducing slowly, slowly. Anyway, I hope this video helps. Thank you for watching. Please visit my blog.